What you're looking at is two of my cars, Jim Johnson's 415 cubic inch small block Chevy on methanol and injected with Lenko and Irwin uh, in a small block Ford Blue Thunder dual dominator uh, 440 cubic inch. Both of them are NA. Please subscribe, like, and share. Hello, today we'll talk about aerodynamics. This is a little bit of a uh, breakaway from the usual engine uh, videos that I do. First thing, aerodynamics is a big part of any racing. And uh, like I always say, you know, it's best that you find your niche, be it engine building, chassis, suspension, transmissions. Uh, a lot of people have asked me what my background um, is about, how I started. Well, you know, as usual, I took my uh, automotive and diesel technology for years and graduated with that. Then I went and proceeded to go to aerospace and uh, went through airframe, uh, jets, turbine engines, um, reciprocating engines, and it's, it goes a little bit deeper or a lot deeper than your standard automotive uh, instruction or college and whatever it might be college or or tech uh, technical school education is always important it gives you a very uh, good idea of what is really going on besides the usual uh, trial and error okay you're guessing through when you understand the four stroke cycle how everything pretty much uh, happens aerospace gives you that insight all right it's just not a basic oh this is how an engine works or a jet uh, a jet engine is nothing but like a big turbo all right and it creates trust whereas a turbocharger creates boost but the principle is the same there's a turbine involved all right so uh, you use exhaust energy to turn the impeller uh, and a jet engine uses exhaust energy to spin the fan if it's a, a fan jet uh, and then it creates thrust on the back to propel uh, the, uh, the aircraft. Now uh, I've been asked this question so what is my background and I tell them aerospace because when you look at years ago I had my chances to do NASCAR stuff uh, you know and uh, one thing is that aerodynamics is an integral part of racing. You have aerodynamics uh, engineer, all right? And uh, it's a field like you would specialize in transmission or chassis, suspension. I specialize in engines and cylinder heads, so forth so on. And some are to exhaust systems, some are into turbos and so forth. Those guys are good in their own niche. And I've always stated for people asking me what my background is, it, what my background is all about. I tell them, look, F1, NASCAR, Indy cars. When you look at all, I would, I would say this with confidence, all the crewmen, the guys working on the actual race car, perhaps not the fabricators, okay, but the engineers, the mechanics, the chassis guys. A lot of them, even the drivers, a lot of them have aerospace backgrounds. In fact, a lot of them are pilots. And uh, there is a certain degree of uh, expertise and a broader uh, field of, uh, should we say, field of vision on what our sport is all about. Years ago, I went to a prestigious uh, university uh, and gave a little presentation about uh, basically engine performance and a little bit on aerodynamics. Uh, the students, the engineering students, were involved in the Shell Echo Marathon project where they're given you know, a certain amount of gas, I think one or two gallons, and they try to go as far as they can on a gallon or two gallons of gas, depends on the rule at that time. I don't even know if it's still the same today. And that's when I started giving hints about combustion efficiency, border stroke relationships, 
aerodynamics, very important. And it's amazing how non-aerospace people have a different outlook into aerodynamics. For example, uh, I was with a group of students back then, and we're looking at a car, and I said, how do you determine aerodynamics in this particular platform here? And everybody's looking at the front. And they go, well, I go, why did you look at the front of the car? Well, we're looking at the sharp nose of the car, like a Corvette, you know, or a Ferrari. And they go, that's how we determine if this car's aero. And they look at the rake of the windshield. Okay, that's, that's correct as well. And I said, look at how I evaluate this car. So everybody looked at the front. And guess what I did? I stood on the back of the car and I went like this. I'm looking at the back of the car. Then I went to the side, looking at the side. And they go, why did you prioritize the back of the car? Didn't you look at the front? I said, well, it also concerns me. But what I'm looking at is the business end of aerodynamics, the back of the car. And they're like, hmm. I said, let me... Uh, tell you something about aerodynamics, I tell them. Because they're unaware of this kind of uh, design criteria. The example of nature dictates aerodynamics. And they all look at each other. And I said, nature will shape any object going through the air into what it wants to see. And then let me explain what I just said. The most aerodynamic form is a raindrop. When the cloud is full of water, it starts to, to fall, what we call rain. And guess what a raindrop looks like? It's rounded on the front and tapers off to a sharp tail. It looks like a meteor. It's actually a raindrop. So I tell them. When you look at an airplane, when you look at the wing of an airplane, what does it look like? It's rounded on the front, okay, the leading edge, then tapers off to a thin section at the back of the wing, just like a raindrop. It's round, tapers off. You don't see an aircraft wing with a sharp leading edge and tapers off or, or ends in a big uh, trailing edge. It doesn't happen that way. It's not aerodynamic. This said, when I look at the rear of the car and I said specifically, to me this what is what matters. Because when an object punches through the air, whatever front it has, the air is going to get around it and form to the roof the hood to the roof to the tail end of the car and if the car for example you guys is aerodynamic Lamborghini or Ferrari or a Corvette they specifically specifically said Corvette all right now you look at this car punches through the air it's got a sharp front end correct it goes through the windshield starts to get bigger when it's punching through the air tapers off on the back, then it's got a blunt cut on the back end of the Corvette. Guess what that is? When the big blunt rear end is this big, let's say, what, two by, by five or six feet, that's the amount of air it displays or pushed through the air. That's the area it went through the air that big two feet by five or six feet long is what is going through the air. The, what the air sees is that big cavity. All right? right behind that is what you call a low pressure area behind that back of the car. And that has a tendency to create a lot of drag. Okay? And because it, that's the footprint that it went through the air and the bigger the back end the more it creates uh, drag while the car is going. In reality almost all cars from Corvette 
to Porsches, to whatever. Lamborghini, I guarantee you, if you take that car in a wind tunnel, facing front, it looks good. It's not aero. If you turn it around and run it through backwards, the coefficient of drag will actually improve. I think there's one video of that, a Porsche 928, that they did somewhere out here. Uh, they had a thing in a wind tunnel running backwards that actually more aerodynamic. But who's going to buy a car that looks like it's going backwards? If you swap it, right, put the steering wheel on the back seat facing rearwards <laughs> and go that direction, it'll probably get better gas mileage, no doubt. But who's going to buy a car that looks like that? Okay, and uh, this said, when you look at some of these Sun Racer, I think the GM uh, is full of solar panel, it looked like a cockroach. All right, it's got a big front end, taper soft to the back, to like a rat tail with all the solar panels around it. That is a perfect area that's like a raindrop, but right now. With four wheels, it looked like a cockroach. <laughs> okay, so uh, to me, this is really the essence of aerodynamics. How small can you make that back end when it goes through the air? Imagine if you have a Corvette, then you put a glass cone behind it. It's going this way, right? And you put a glass cone behind it to like a rat tail, okay, or like a tail, a see through plexiglass, you watch that aerodynamics actually pick up. But who's going to buy a car that looks like that? Okay, with a long tail. In fact, all these pony cars, sports car, what is it? They got a rear end that's big and a long hood, right? Wheelbase like a Corvette or a Mustang. That's where the pony car started. It was a short back end, two door, long hood, that's what they call a pony car, sports car. Same thing, Porsches, Corvettes, Ferraris. They all have the long hood, the sharp nose, so forth and so on. But that's not the way they're evaluating. That's why they were, they were really lo looking at me when I was looking at the back of the car and I was motioning, okay, I don't like this. And they really couldn't figure it out until I said and explained why I was looking at the back end of the car which we call the business end of aerodynamics because that's exactly the net result when it goes through the air. Let's look at some examples of funny cars, not NASCAR, okay, NASCAR is doing their best to doggone slow down their car from small carburetor restrictor plates to now fuel injection with restrictor plates uh, with big back end, you know, they put the this doggone spoiler on the back almost standing straight up all to ruin the aerodynamics of the car and make it run through a dirty all right but when you look at other racers except for um, issues about downforce sure you can put all those wings and all those uh, large uh, back end uh, airfoils and so, so you know wings or dual wings to try to cut down on drag at the same time have downforce. That's all part of it. Let's look at a funny car and I will show you what I'm just talking about in regards to this tapering of the back. Let's check it out. It wasn't even that long after I graduated from aerospace that I realized when I looked at a funny car what they're trying to do and no doubt these guys are sharp, okay? And like I said, none of these guys will figure this out if they don't have an aerospace background. Remember when I talk about the raindrop and how the tail of the car, like the GM Sun Racer, I don't know if that was what it was called, but how it tapered off on the back of the car. Here's a perfect example of the Ford Tasca funny car. Look at the sloping front end, very close to the ground there. So you're looking at a half, basically half sharp point there. 
Okay, but look at where the car tapers off right there. Okay, if they could extend it, they would, but the rules stated and the Mustang back end is blunt or flat. But look what happened. How come they didn't do it this way? All right, to get a little bit more arrow on the floor or on the, the bottom of the car and go this way. What that would have done, it would have made this whole back end much bigger. So what happened was they did this according to the rules and they had the fender flares there. Then suddenly they stopped it halfway and they kicked it up just to have the actual stock width and height of the back end of a Mustang. But look at this rake up here. Don't mind this, this is a vertical uh, tail. All right, and let's get the, the downforce thing, minimal downforce really, because they want this thing to accelerate. Maybe a little bit of downforce to add pressure to the back slick. But if you remove this, okay, you remove this uh, vertical fin, you're gonna have this configuration here, okay? So it's gonna taper off to the factory thing, but this is the indication. And all the other funny cars would have that kind of rig, regardless, not just a Mustang. It could be a Chevy, it could be a Toyota. It's gonna have that, and let's look at other examples of that uh, kind of uh, aero, aerodynamic tricks. Here is another shot this is a Ferron Caps Napa Auto Parts funny car. Look at how the front end's also low. And of course, it's not really rounded, but very, very arrow in the right context on the front end. Slices through the air. It's not really a blunt front end. And it covers the side of the car. And then the big slick on the back. And guess what? Look at it here. It kicks up again. I wish I had. I wish I didn't have the vertical stabilizer here. If that's what the proper word is for this funny car, but you can see the uh, rake to try to minimize the actual. So when it goes through the air, instead of if this was all the way down here to keep the sides arrow, all right, uh, it would have made a big blunt backhand, and there would have been this much uh, space it punched through the air but they kicked it up and have the factory dimension on the rear of the car I don't know if this is a Camaro or what but that's exactly what it'll do all right it taper kicked up to the smaller end and this vertical uh, stabilizer is there to keep it straight and of course it has a little bit of wing back there. I think it's a dual wing. So it has a lot more aerodynamic uh, efficiencies in it instead of a single wing but a double wing like a biplane would be. So it has a set of um, hole in the center to make it slide through the air a little bit faster and give it a little bit more or a lot more downforce. But that's what we're looking at. Here we see a ProMod. This looks like a Camaro, and I tell you what, regardless if it's a Camaro, a Mustang, or Dodge, it's going to have the same thing. This is more pronounced, not like the funny car, because you can see the rake. It's got a big front end, okay, just like a regular Camaro would be, or a Mustang. Then, of course, they rake the windshield, and guess, look at this. It tapers off to a wing that's not stood up, but basically sliding down for aerodynamics and look what happened here again like the funny car it tapered off okay and you can look at a pro stock nhra mustang camaro dodge whatever they all look like that they're trying to slice through the air so there's the net um, hole it cuts through the air all right so this is obvious you can see the the bottom of the fenders right there on the rear and then go straight up all right it's clear as day as it's shown here 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 is Carl Stevens Jr's Pro Mod Camaro 
is an old school, like a 69, yeah, like a Z28 body style. Again, arrow there, and look what happened here. It kicked it up. And over here, it tapered off. And that's just trying to extend it. Hopefully, it'll try to make it really blow through the air. I hope this video helped in further understanding anything about racing. But I'm not going to talk about transmission, setting up rear ends, <laughs> or chassis. I don't know anything about that, so please don't ask me anything about those three. All right? And uh, paint? No, oh, nothing. Okay, but um, engines, as usual. But I'll go through some of the aero stuff uh, in the future. You know, how the back end supposed to look or the front end. Certain things we could uh, make the engine slide through the air a little bit better. I will touch on that in the future. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. And uh, so we can keep this going. Good night, guys. Take care.